Hey, it's Joe from The Automator, and we just finished a client call with Alan. Alan was uh, trying to use UIA for browser automation, and he was getting stuck on some things. And so Isaiah's actually walked through some really interesting stuff. I don't think it's been explained this way before. So we confirmed with Alan if he was okay uh, sharing this. Um, so we've excerpted this out. I think you're going to learn a lot of great things about using IA in, in, uh, with AutoHotKey. Um, here we're, I think, automating Chrome, just to give an example. But Isaiah's is showing how to get patterns and depending on what you're trying to do with it, you know, which pattern you want to use. So hopefully you find this video interesting. If you Find it helpful, please like the video. It really helps us out get a lot more views. But stick around. There's a lot of good learnings here. And check out our other videos on UAA. I'll put a link here if you want. Thank you. I just, yeah, no, no. I just miss it. <laughs> no, don't worry. So the point is, um, UIA, you have been doing programming in other languages. I don't know, in mm -hmm. other hotkey or something, right? A little bit of um, right. Java. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's perfect. Now, what happens is UIA returns a lot of objects, right? But usually in programming, you interact with the objects directly. So you get an object and you can manipulate the object right away, right? That's mm -hmm. mostly how in most programming languages it works. This one is similar, but when you're going to interact with an object, you have to get what is called a pattern. So just to, to clarify, okay, patterns in programming is just a group of actions that are similar. So for example, all text controls have similar things that you can do with them. Like for example, put text in it, grab text out of it, but you cannot click on a text control. So, right. so, so when I have a control that is a text control, it has a pattern of how I can interact with it. That's what a pattern is, okay? Okay. So different controls have different patterns. For example, a button, not only I can get the text that it has or set the text that it has, but I can click on it. So the pattern for a button is a little bit different than a pattern from a control. Is that idea kind of like clear, right? Yes. With UIA, that's the difficulty that most people face, which is that when you try to interact with a control, you have to get the pattern first because one control can have three patterns or four mm -hmm. patterns. And depending mm -hmm. on what you want to do, you have to get the right pattern. That's what happens. In mm -hmm. your case, you showed me a text control. So what I want to get from that text control is the text pattern because I want to set values or get values from it, which I assume that what you want to do is put a value into it so that you yeah. later can go ahead and search for right. something, right? So basically, in this case, what you want is the text, uh, the text pattern. Let me... Uh, I don't know if I can share my screen. Uh, you confirm? Can you confirm if you can see my screen here? Oh, yes, sir, I can. Okay. So there's this tool called Accessibility Insights for Windows, which mm -hmm. does exactly the same as the UIA viewer that you were right. using. The only thing is that this one can give me a little bit more information about certain things that probably UIA viewer either... You have to look for it, or I don't know where it is. I haven't used it that much. But you will notice when I hover over something, this little bar highlights yes. it. And here on the right side, you will notice that I have what is called patterns. Yes. Now, here's the thing. The most common one that you will be using is the value pattern, because the value pattern is the one that has the information that that control is displaying. So, for example, if I hover here, you would see that it says VS Code. You see that? That's yes. the value pattern. But notice that it's not the only pattern that it has. It has a grid item pattern, okay, which has some information about where in the grid that particular icon is at. Mm -hmm. And when I go to something else, like, for example, here on the right side or left side, you will notice that now not only I have the value pattern that we discussed, which the value is music, but it has the expand or collapse pattern. Mm -hmm. Because this on the left is kind of like a, an accordion that opens and closes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Also, it has the scroll item pattern and selection pattern. As I mentioned, one control can have multiple patterns. And depending on what you want to do, you might need to get one of these guys. So for oh, example, I see. Right. If I just want to know what the text is, I would use the value pattern. Uh -huh. But if I want to expand that, then I would use the expand collapse pattern. Okay. Which allows me to go ahead and select what is called the action 
and run the action, and you would notice that it would try to expand it. In this case, that doesn't have anything to expand, but let's try it with downloads, which can. When you say expand, do you mean like a, um, a, a, a drop down menu? You will see on the left um, when I run the action, uh, check this out, it would just open the folder. You see that? Oh, perfect. Yes. Yes. And if I collapse it, it would just close it. So yes. if my action, if what I want to do is open or close that particular drop down there, yes. then I cannot use the value pattern because the value pattern is not for that. The value pattern only gives me the value, or I could even probably set the value to something else. Let's say that. Let me see. It didn't. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't allow me to <laughs> set the value for that one. But in general, um, in certain situations, I can definitely just change the value for something. I could try it in certain situations, but most of the times. In the one that we are going to be working on, on your program, you probably will be able to set the value for, ah, there you go. So this one, I set the word test mm -hmm. into it and notice how the name of the folder just changed. Automatically yeah. appeared, yeah. Right. So then again, as I mentioned, it is just a matter of what you want to do. Let me see if that actually changed the name. Yeah, that changed the name of that folder. So. Mm -hmm. If I had it like run or rest, which is what it has, I could just use the value pattern to try to set it for it. So um, for whatever reason, it's not letting me know. It says that he cannot do it in the set, in the status that the object is at because I did change something before. But I think you, ah, there it goes. Yeah, now it changed again. So... I get. I think you get the idea that I'm trying to uh, explain, which is mm -hmm. um, with UIA, whenever you are dealing with a control, in this case, you've got the automation ID that you saw, right? You've got it. You first have to get the pattern that you want. In this case, it would be the value pattern, right? Mm -hmm. I can show you some code because I had, uh, I was doing that for a different program so that you could take a look at the code and I could even even send it so that you could um, get a, an idea. Um, let me just one second. Let me also share that for a second. So you at least have an idea of how it looks like. Mm -hmm. So first of all, um, I don't know if you can take a look at this particular line in which I'm connected to Chrome, right? Yes. And I use the find first by, and wow. I use the automation ID, which is what you got. <clears throat> right. right. Now that I'm saving it into an object. But now here's the part. I got the object, but remember that I want to get the current pattern. You see? Mm -hmm. So... I first have to find the item by using the automation ID. And then I will get the current pattern using value. I want the value. That's what I want. In my okay. case, my program had to be very stable. For that reason, I was using a while loop, while loop. Until, I got, until I got the pattern. Okay. So this is not really needed. Usually in your case... As soon as you are in that page, the element is there. In my case, my program was doing stuff very rapidly and probably the item was not there. That's the reason why I use a while loop. This so it goes through the while loop until it finds that particular Exactly. So while that is empty, breaks. right. So while that is empty, it will keep trying to get it. That's what I'm doing. I'm just retrying. I see. And if it is, if it tried more than 100 times, which is just a second because I'm just right. looping 10 milliseconds here. If it tries more than 100 times, I stop the loop. Usually, whenever you have a while loop like this, mm -hmm. usually it's good to have kind of like a break in case you never get it. Right. And in the end, after I finish, I try to check for the value again. Like, do I still have the value? No, then I will continue trying to get the value. So again, I try 100 times again. And if I couldn't get it in 100 times, then I throw an error. I say, hey, timed out. I couldn't get whatever I was expecting. In your case, I don't think you have to make it that uh, complex, complex because in my case, it's just for making it stable enough. 
Mm -hmm. um, and because there's a few unexpected things all the time. In your case, if you are on the page, it's very likely that the value is there. So you just have to first find the thing with the automation ID. And second of all, with that object, get the pattern value, which is the one that you want. Mm -hmm. After you have the current value, there's two things that you can do with it. This is the current pattern, right? I just got mm -hmm. the pattern. And this is the current value. You can either get the value as I am doing, which I'm trying to get the value into a variable, or you can definitely just set the value. You say current pattern equals test, and you just set a value to it. I see. So in your case, if you're trying to set a value into that thing, that's what you would do. You would try to get the current pattern, get the current value, and then put something in it. That okay. should actually help you out with whatever you're doing. Now, after you set the value, you probably will want to click something else, right? So yeah. you would have to get that button, probably with the automation ID, right? Again. Mm -hmm. And if you find the button, then just use the click command. I think in um, UIA browser, um, uh, yeah, so you could do something like this. You see this line? Find first by, uh -huh. use the automation ID to find it, and then you just click on it. You can do oh. that. Right, if it is a button, of course. <laughs> okay, so you use that. That that it goes from above the if statement. It's it's um, the Chrome line. You take that and add that as well. I, I'm assuming, and then no. So in the code you send, you already did this part. Oh, because, I see. right. Because um, as far as I could tell, it was at the top. I think. Right. Let me let me here. Here we go. So. Uh, you see here where it says new UIA browser? Uh-huh. Here? Uh-huh. You already put it into a variable. So you already did that part. You already have the Chrome handle, which is what I'm doing in my code here in this line. It's just a little bit different because mm -hmm. you're using UIA browser and I'm not. I'm actually doing a little bit, uh, something more direct. That's what happened. I see. I understand. So is there a way to um, attach to a running instance of the browser? Because, like, for example, that 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 tool that I was using the, it's mm -hmm. called SysPro. It's always something that's open on my my browser um, on one of my tabs. Is there a way to directly link to that particular? Yes, that's what I am doing. I'm connecting. Oh, and that's my existing there. window. So right here, what I'm doing is passing the handle of the window. So WinExist mm -hmm. gives you a handle number, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so the Win title here is just uh, Chrome because that's what I'm using, Chrome.exe. Uh, so I get Chrome.exe, get the handle of it, and that's what I use for my title. And when you do the WinExist on that title, let me simplify this so that you know exactly what I'm doing. So Yeah, because I'm a little lost. I'll be right, honest. don't worry. Uh, I, I know because I'm doing all of that just because I need it like that. But in general, no, right. You can By the way, sorry for interrupting you. Um, the nice thing about the UIA, most ways you automate Chrome, often you, you can't connect to a running instance. So it is one of the big benefits of using UIA over a lot of the other ones. Okay. Right. So here's the thing. Have you used WinTitle, uh, like WinExist in AutoHotKey? No, I haven't before. Okay. Let me show you what it does. And so let me just use a message box. WinExist. Chrome.exe. So this function checks whether there is a program that has this title in it. In this case, I'm just, oh. so, so it could be anything. Um, uh, I'm just using this particular way because I want to give you the Chrome one. Mm -hmm. If that window exists, it would return a number, which is an ID number. Okay. So if I run it, you will notice that I get this weird thing, which oh, is actually cool. a hexadecimal yeah, yeah. handle to that window, which I could use as an ID that later on I could use in other situations. Like, for example, if I want to connect 
to using UIA, UIA, mm-hmm. I have to pass it a handle to a window. So that's what I'm getting at. So what I'm doing is I'm the, in my code, I do everything in one line, but you could definitely do it in certain steps. You get the window title, which is, I can get a handle here. The window title is going to be HK exe chrome.exe. And as I just shown, the WinExist returns a handle number, right? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm getting, right? And this handle, I'm going to pass it to my element from handle, from the UI automation um, library. So that's the UIA interface. You're using the UIA browser, which is a little bit different. Oh, I see. I'm using the UIA interface. They're both the same thing. The Uh browser one, the one that you're doing, Uh is just doing this part here, element from handle, Uh but it's hiding it from you to make it easier for you. Um, I don't need it to be hidden from me. I I know what I'm doing, so I just use it myself directly. Right. And I have a little bit more control. But when you use the element from handle, you pass the handle to the window, which you can get with WinExist. Uh-huh. And I just use the word true here to modify saying connect to the Chrome element, which is special because automating browsers is a little bit trickier <laughs> than normal programs. That's what happens. Right. So where do you put the handle, the actual handle? Um, when you say where do you put it, what do you mean? Yeah, because whenever you're looking at the file, um, a tool you were using and what was it called? The file tree, something or other, uh-huh. inspector or something. Where you, where it, tree walker. This, wherever you, uh-huh. it, it highlights each uh-huh. each thing and it tells you what the handle is and the um, automation ID and all that. Good right. stuff. Over there, you do not get that. That's the reason why I do it myself. And on the tool itself, I don't remember. I don't. I don't know. Let me let me open it. But I don't think the tool gives you the handle. And this is the other thing: handles change every time you close the program and reopen it. Oh. So your script must get the current one. So it's not static. No, no uh, IDs like those type of IDs are not static. They're not um, static. Right. So so, and, your script, and you can have multiple of the same window. So, you know, you might get, yeah. So, so that's the reason why my script has a win exists right here. That sure. is getting the current ID for that particular browser. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so it is not static, but I have a function that gets it for me. Right. And, 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 um, and you don't have to worry that much about it. As soon as you get this, now Chrome is connected to UIA, mm-hmm. and it could be an existing window. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, a new window or something like that. It can be an existing window, but this should return the object, the UIA object, that now we could use the find first by and do all the things like clicking or, and stuff. It's just this one line. For, mm-hmm. for me, it looks more complex than what I just explained, but it is not because it is, should be complex. It's because I'm looking for stability more than readability. That's what right. happens. Okay. So, but in general, it is just the element from handle. You need a handle, which I'm getting here, and the word true to make sure that it connects to Chrome. That's all. As soon as you get that, you're good to go. So have lots to learn. I bet you. I'm, <laughs> wait, I, hey, I'm I'm down for more Udemy classes on this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. So, um, for now, I would say the code that you have, you're go- you're going good. That's exactly how you should go. The only part that is missing is finding the element with the automation ID. And after you get it, getting the pattern, which is the value pattern, which is the one that you want. So Alan, in in some ways, I think we should have started the conversation slightly differently in in establishing a couple things to just to to make sure we understand. Are are you trying to create a tool that will run on other people's computers? Uh, Yes. Okay. 
so I can exactly. share it with my 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 teammates because yeah. you know I feel I feel like when one succeeds, we all all succeed if we do it right. You yes. know, um, and and I'm all about that. Learn one, teach one, do one kind of thing. You know. <laughs> Yeah. And um and the other one is with the the real gem of this and I can't remember if it was you or someone else I was talking to was um this you don't have to install any other tools you know it's it's natively already available um in everyone's computer right yeah. so you'll have to have auto hotkey or the executable you give them but you don't need an, a chrome extension or the with Refidium, you don't need the web drivers right so right. So okay, because okay. yeah, so that's that. I mean, I, to me, I want it to be as it's a, it's just a little slow going, and that's all, that's okay. You know, I mean, I don't mind helping people learn because, um, like I said, you know, if you if you know something, then you can you can share that with others, and um, that's what it's all about, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> In this particular case, I, I would like to ask you. Okay, so because the information that I'm giving you, especially when it is the first time that you hear it, is really confusing. It's a lot of things. Actually, UIA is one of those tools that I tell people is easy to use, is very difficult to understand. Yeah. So it is easy to use because once you get the concept of it, it's very easy to just code something. So it looks like I need the work. path as well as as the automation id is that what you're what you were saying the path when the, you say the path to what well when it went for like um for my example in, in my code you said that the next thing i need would be the the um the path the pattern, pattern. Or the pattern rather right yes i was pattern. thinking of path so, because of those numbers yeah <laughs> but in this case yes first of all you have to use the find by uh, the find first to get that element Mm -hmm. which you're going to find it with the automation ID. You can find elements with other things too, via the name or other things. The things that automation ID is kind of like the, the sure way of getting it. So find first by automation ID. After you get that, then you have to get the pattern. That's Is the there a book that you would suggest me to, to, to maybe to seek out so I can learn a little bit more about it? Um, about the UI automation for auto hot. We can try to find. I don't know. Yeah, um, we can we can Google it. Uh, there's the documentation, overall documentation, you know, on Microsoft or the yeah, website. That, but that, that's a habit. It, last week, roughly, I think you commented on a video and asked like for whatever, and I'm like, unfortunately, because of the holidays, I haven't had a chance to actually as night chat about it. But I'm like, Ooh. yeah, what you're asking for doesn't really exist. The problem is. It's like web scraping too, right? In the sense of every web page is different. So every program you interface with is built differently by developers that use different methods and different properties and different things. And that's why it's so, it's it's like the API calls too, right? It's, uh -huh. it's, it's so hard to teach because there's so many different things they could do. <laughs> yeah, I see. That's for sure. I see. Which is also why we don't have a course on this because it's like, uh, you know. There's so many. Yeah. yeah, well, and, and people keep bugging us to create a course on on API calls, and I'm like, you don't understand. Like, this is a huge, huge topic. Um, right. And, and it's you know, it take a long time to to create a course.